Hey boys, welcome back to some more NRL Supercoach. It's going to be the round 12 review. And as you can see, another another good solid score. Two weeks in a row now, we've gone above 1,300, which is which is good. We're finding some consistencies. Moved up five, you know, about 5,500 ranks. But I, oh, I got to be honest, this was... Uh, Oh, this was one of those weeks. It was a it, what what could have been week right here. We were we were on track. We were on track for a damn good score, man. But it's oh fucking it capitulated pretty badly. I mean, we still we still got over thirteen hundred. I can't complain. But just man, just some of the some of the fifty fifty calls and ah. Oh, Oh man, oh man! Just it, what could have been? It could have been such a good week, but it is what it is. We're, we're still moving in the right direction. I still think the team is set up pretty well. Well, I mean, a couple of, a couple of well, not issues, but uh, a couple of interesting ones that come out of Origin and also just with team selections with a couple of my players. But let's go through how we went uh, as a whole. And it's star oh man, it couldn't have started like much better in uh, in this round. It was very good, <laughs> but so Reese Robson once again sixty five points. I mean, again, he's, he's he's continuing to do the business. Very unfortunate that uh, fucking Happy Coruscant, Happy Coruscant has not been selected for Origin, and Reese Robson has. I mean, I was already expecting Robson to play Origin. I wasn't sure if he would, but I was just banking on him either getting a bench spot or maybe starting. But the fact they've gone with one dummy half and it's not Appy, fuck, dude. I'm like, it's not it's not the biggest deal in the world because Robson's not a guy to go absolutely massive, but it is annoying. It is annoying. Uh, I guess the Tigers, the Tigers don't even play the first buy, which is which is a little... It would have been nice for the, the guys that had Apicoris out if you played this first buy. A bit of a bit of a uh, luxury one there. Probably expecting not to play, but they got the buy anyway. But yeah, Robson, oh, it would have been great if he was playing. Just, you know, had the extra number. Also, wouldn't have had to even think about trading him out. But obviously now, it's... Um, I don't know. We still have a decision to make with uh, Reese Robson. We'll, uh, we'll discuss that later. Obviously, Brayley on the buy, the front row. Uh, Terrell May, unfortunately, he didn't play the hugest minutes as my dog is barking. Okay, I'm back. Of course, as soon as I start, every time, as soon as I start recording something, something always pops up. But uh, uh, yes, talking about the front row, Terrell May. Um, I I thought it'd be a good again. I thought it'd be a good bench for Terrell May, but unfortunately, he didn't play. Didn't play big minutes in this one. I mean, still 40 points. I'll take it. I'm not really too concerned. But uh, I mean, 37 minutes about what he's been getting. Just the, I guess the the PPM down a little bit. But. Uh, now, Afu White, I mean, we'll, we'll look at him. We'll look at him more like after team lists to see if he's still the 13 and uh, and also the preview. But I I mean, I was interested in White uh, and he did not do himself any disservice, uh, disservice playing Locke. And also Radley was good on the edge. So I don't know, man, like he could be a sneaky pickup, but... It's a little tricky with how many Roosters players we already have, so we'll we'll, we'll discuss that later. Uh, Josh Curran, sixty-one points. Um, I mean, he was fucking everywhere in this game, Curran. Obviously, sixty-one points is good, but it, I mean, it could have been a lot better. Like he was so good, it was just so much like work. He he ran the ball like fuck. He he was getting involved a lot. So good to see. Uh, Sammy Hughes, thirty-one. Liam Henry. <laughs> Liam Henry, 74 points. I mean, I, you know, it doesn't really help me, but it's it's good. He's going to make some more money. Um, he was very solid. Uh, he's now got a negative break even. Uh, obviously, I held him just because, uh, like, I mean, that's what I was hoping for. 40 minutes. I'm just hoping that he can get, well, it doesn't matter too much in this first buy because I don't, I might not need him, but... If he can bang out 40 minutes, like, consistently, uh, 
that would be great because he he's a ppm beast like he, he scores so well if he gets 40 minutes he'll score like 45 50 points almost like he, he's he's very very solid so that's why i held him obviously he scored a try he had tackle bus like the man was on fire in this game i mean penrith just absolutely fucking decimated the sharks unbelievable very embarrassing for the sharkies <laughs> i gotta say i did tip the sharks but i mean i didn't think it would be an easy game that's for sure i knew penrith were going to come back strong after last week but i wasn't expecting that uh but yeah uh henry gonna make some more cash and uh i mean it's, it is good because after and if we look at henry he plays 13 14 he could be a very handy number for those games he doesn't play 16 or 19 so if Henry can make some good coin in the next couple of weeks, then potentially we could look at trading him up. Uh, I guess we do have Sam Hughes, but he plays 16. I don't know. Hughes has sort of dropped off a little bit, obviously. 31 points. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens with Hughes. I mean, I'm not going to trade him out this week, but... Uh, Hopefully, he can just jag and attack in uh, in round 13. Uh, our back row, once again. So, oh, just pain. Pain. Angus Cry and Ali Katoa, once again, proving to be, like, just absolute premium center second row forwards. As you can see, we got the captaincy on our boy, Kai Pierce Paul. So, I did a loop. I did end up using the loop, which meant... I dropped Bo for more, which <laughs> oh, for more. He's been fucking. He's been so good for me. But like I, I was tossing up. It was a tough choice. It was a tough choice. I didn't know. And and but the thing I'm like I am annoyed because it cost me. It cost me a lot of points. And honestly, I think the way this worked out because I used the loop and I dropped Furmore. And you'll see my AE in a second. <laughs> I think the loop definitely cost me some points. But at the end of the day, it was a safe big score from our first scorer. So, like, it was a it was one of those 50-50s. Uh, and also, if I knew... Like, Firmal obviously went to the centers, like, pretty late. I didn't know he went to the centers before I made the decision. But if I knew Firmal was playing in the centers before I made the decision... I 100% would have dropped Furmore. Like, I wasn't, I wouldn't have expected Furmore to score that well playing center, but he did. He, he played really well. So, I mean, defensively, he was having a bit of a nightmare, but attacking wise, he was, he was very uh, solid coming up against Karapani. Uh, sort of, yeah, it was a, it was a battle between the two of those. But yeah, Furmore, I mean, you know, making some good cash, can't complain, but. It's annoying. It is annoying. Uh, Morgan Smithy's 29 points. I don't know what happened here because he was... He downgraded a lot. Um, played 56 minutes still. I, I, I have no idea what happened. Um, did he get like Sinbin late? I, I, I don't think so. I feel like he was on like 40 points uh, before he like went off for his like customary break. I don't know. I have no idea how he lost so many points maybe he did get sinbin fuck i don't remember i don't think he did but a bit of a worry like i <laughs> and then we got fucking sean lane he came off the bench so honestly sean like like i said i was tossing up like out of all my back rowers i don't know i didn't know who like obviously preston and a couple other guys were like very you know they're very tempting but i was like who do i trade because they all sort of play 13 firmore has been really good so like he covers 16 as well so i didn't really want to trade firmore if like this could be a bit of a blessing in disguise because if lane is named on the bench once again this week he is he's gone he's straight gone and it'll be good to get rid of him and i can bring in I don't know. I mean, it depends teamless. I'm, I'm fucking hoping. I'm praying that Jacob Preston gets the starting spot because I really want to bring Preston in. But I don't know. Uh, Seraldo fucking loves Semen in the back row for some reason. And he did score a couple of tries, so it probably didn't do his uh, service any harm. But surely Preston gets a spot. Thankfully, Lane didn't lose that much cash. Like, he lost, yeah, like 10k. So, it was fine. But, yeah, if, he, if he's on the bench again, coming through the fucking middle. Like, he played through the middle. He actually looked okay when he was on there through the middle. But, like, 
yeah, he's got to go. He's got to go if he's on the bench. And uh, yeah, like I said, it'll be a bit of a blessing in disguise. I was pretty happy to hold all my trades this week, but yeah, if Sean Lane is on the bench, then I think he's just, yeah, get him off for, for someone who covers nicely. But uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, Nico Hines, three points. Love to see it. This this also was like... <sighs> this also tilted me a bit because like... So obviously I looped... I ended up looping, but before I had to make the decision, there was a bit of talk that Hines might not play this game, right? And I was hoping, I was praying that he wouldn't play the game because obviously everyone has Hines. Everyone who's going well has Hines. So I was like, if he doesn't play, that's fine. I don't need him to play. I'm not going to captain him. Like, I don't I don't need him to play. If And if he doesn't play, I already played Wishart, right? So I had Hines starting... So I could have got the free loop with Hines and I wouldn't have had to drop Furmor. Oh, but of course Hines played and he was absolutely fucking dog. Like I I honestly like I'm not gonna lie, dude. I, I think I don't think Hines wanted to be there. Like he did not look like he wanted to be there. And I think like I'm not trying to I'm not trying to like make accusations but the head knock it was like it was a pretty nasty knee like i'm not surprised he went off but i sort of feel like that was a bit of a it was sort of i think heinz was pretty happy that happened because it gave him a good excuse to go off for the head knock and then uh they made the decision for him not to go back in the second half like i'm sorry but that's that's fucking that's shit <laughs> like are you serious are you serious top of the table i mean i know you don't want to risk your player but like it's a big game. You're losing. He's playing for an origin spot. I'm actually shocked that he got selected in the origin squad. I guess the thing is that they had like no other half. They had like no other halves to choose. So I guess it makes sense that he got selected. But like, I don't know. I think it was pretty, I, I thought it was pretty shit going uh, for the Sharks there with, with the Heinz situation. But yeah, unfortunately for me, uh, like it would have been so perfect if he just got ruled out before the game. But of course, he didn't. He got three points. It was nice because apparently, like a bunch of people captain Hines, which I thought was pretty insane. Like I don't know. Like I, I know it's easy in hindsight, pardon the pun, but I, I was never. I, I, I mean, I I talked about it maybe for a second that oh maybe he captain Hines, but I was like. Oh, I, I definitely was not going to do that. That, that would have been a bit nervous. Um, but uh, and especially with the potential that he had the calf issue. So, yeah, unfortunate timing there for, for all things considered, but it is what it is. Tyron Wishart, like I said, I brought him in uh, for Luke Brooks. Luke fucking... Oh, my God. This game... <laughs> I was... This game was tilting me a lot right? Because Luke Brooks, obviously, he does what he does. He started the game on a bit of fire. He he had like a line break. He had a try assist. And I was like, holy shit, Luke Brooks is about to go off. And of course, fucking Luke Brooks does what he does. And <laughs> I don't know what he ended up with. I'm, he probably updated a bit. Maybe he got like 60 odd. But he, of course, oh, he's so like, the things he does is just so Luke Brooks, right? He, he came up with like a do you get like an intercept or like a charge down or saying he like streaks away and then he fucking drops the ball it was like it's such a luke brooks thing to do but i was i was very salty because wishart was not going great like the storm were just putrid the storm were putrid in this game um they were fucking terrible Wishart wasn't really getting any footy. Uh, he was making his tackles, like his base was pretty good. And then he just, he, he snuck some uh, some attack at the end. I was like, oh, thank you. He got a line break. He got a, a try assist. It was, it was beautiful. A little inside ball. I could see it happening, the play before. I could see the gap. I saw Wishart running. I'm like, oh, baby, just give him the ball. <laughs> and he did. And it was great. It was great to see. But um, yeah, 60 points. I'm happy with that. Uh, Dylan Brown, 66, in a game that the Eels were absolutely fucking terrible. Like, there were some pretty terrible performances this round. The Eels were... F oh, my God. Like, they made the Rabbitohs look great. Like, the Rabbitohs have been terrible. And, like, just... I don't understand. Because the Eels, they like, on paper, the forward pack is still good, right? It's still a good forward pack. The Rabbitohs forward pack has been terrible. But... 
like pretty much from the get go, the Rabbitohs forwards were just dominating. Like every set, they were just they were just charging through. The post contact meters were incredible. If you never knew the 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 table, you'd be like, oh, the Rabbitohs are flying. Like they looked really good, but the the Eels are just that bad. But Dylan Brown, sixty six points, and uh, lucky Galvin, my God, the gift that just keeps on giving. 90 points the man is an absolute machine uh the the absolute cheapy of the the season so far i think well there's a couple of good ones but he's just been so so reliable uh every week i've played him i think i've only pl- not played him one week where he also went really well so yeah galvin continuing to do great stuff our back line so as you can see the back line was pretty good <laughs> <laughs> Joey Manu, we obviously brought in uh, for Taylor May, which I'm happy with. Obviously, the news now that Tedesco has been dropped from Origin means Manu's not going to fullback, which typically you'd be like, oh, that's a bit of a kick in the guts. But honestly, that that was the big reason why I brought Manu in. I still wasn't... I, I had no idea. It was it, In my mind, it was very 50-50 if they were going to go with Edwards, if they're going to go with Tedesco. But uh, I was like... Manu's looking so good at center this year. Like, he's always looked good, but his scores at center in the previous years have always been like... They've been they've been solid, but usually not keeper level at center. It's just the fact that he plays a few games of fullback, a few games of 5'8", across the season, that his average spikes, and they're the times you want to bring him in. But this year, his average at center has been huge. Like, he's getting way more involved... He is roaming just more consistently, so had to bring him in, and uh, yeah, did well. Uh, Dom Young, 36 points. I mean, it's one of those games. I mean, Dom Young, he's going to have games like this where he just doesn't get tries. He still scored 36, so, I, I, you know, it is what it is. He still made a lot of cash. I want to... Is break even, like, really high this week? Yeah, 127. He made another 40K, so he could hit it. He could not. They take on the Cowboy, a very weak Cowboy side. So, oh, he could go one, he could go one fifty, or it could go thirty again. Dom Young, we'll see. Jacob Kiraz, my man, one thirty four. So obviously, I looped Kiraz. I actually thought he would update a little bit. He was on like one thirty seven. I was sort of expecting him to maybe get like one forty. But he did. He downgraded three points. So I was like, man, really? Like they they take so long to update the the first game scores. I was getting a little bit annoyed. But I don't know. As I said, if I didn't do the loop, I, I would have scored more points. But at the same time, it was like it was just it was a safe, like a really safe, really good captain option it's just the matter that like every sort of captain option went well apart from Hines because a lot of people captain Hines but the my captain was going to be Drinkwater if I didn't go with Kiraz and it was looking pretty good but then fucking Drinkwater <laughs> Drinkwater and Holmes like fucking linked for a try in like the last minute of the game so that sort of blew it out a little bit uh Val Holmes even with the Sinbin 136 so He's back, baby. Drink quarter 105. Blaze to Lungy. Again, like I said, with Dylan Brown, the Eels were terrible. Blaze, 87 points. Armstrong didn't play. Jacob Gagai, 10 points as my AE. And then Kale Eero. He, so Eero was the guy I was tossing up. Do I play Eero or Bo Fermor? Obviously, I made the wrong choice. There's no doubting that. But I don't know. I, I Again, I thought the Sharks would be a lot better against Penrith they were not so it was just it was just it, it was it was not a game I was expecting and uh Eero obviously didn't really see much at all uh but yeah that's what it is Gagai I do have a little bit of salt here because he absolutely got dudded on points like 100% he got dudded how did he score 10 points he downgraded like six points he was already like I'm I am fucking dead serious. Like, obviously, he didn't score well. He didn't score well at all. Like, I'm not saying he should have got, like, 30-odd points, but I was looking at the scores in this game, like, closely, just because he was going to be my AE. I was like, oh, fucking please do something. I looked at half time, and my man was on, like, one point, but, like, without fucking doubt, he'd made, like, three or four tackles in that first half. He probably missed, like, one, maybe two, and he took, like, a couple of runs, right? Like, 
not a lot, but that one point should have been about in my in my count, it should have been about five points. And then the second half, he he did like slightly more work, um, so he got dudded. I, and I'm fucking salty. <laughs> I'm like really salty about it because I was like, how did he downgrade to ten points, bro? Like I'm, I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, whatever. It's fine. Like just the fifty fifties haven't gone our way. Yeah, guy now. Like. Yeah, it was obviously pain because Cody Walker was out. Like with Cody Walker in the side, I was like, okay, Gagai can he can score a try here. I'm, I'm like, he might. Without a try, Gagai is putrid. But I was like, with with Walker in the team, I'm not that like bummed about it. But then Walker obviously got ruled out. I was like, oh shit, here we go, Gagai. <laughs> Gagai is in for a rough, uh, rough time. Um, because he just does not get involved whatsoever, and uh, and yeah, now he is he is definitely a sell. He's got a seventy break even. <laughs> oh, it's honestly a good thing he doesn't play this week. If I'm honest, because like I don't, I don't. Well, I don't know. We'll we'll look at trading him. Obviously, he's hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We got some decisions to make, actually. We have some decisions to make. We could end up trading him. So, like I said, I got 523 in the bank, which is nice. So, I can actually trade him to pretty... Well, not anybody. But oh, what is fucking... I just got to see. Fucking Tedesco is going to be a bit too expensive, isn't he? Oh. He got 150. He's gone up 70k. I think Tedesco is going to be slightly out of reach. I was like, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't have minded trading Gagai straight to Tedesco. We do it. Oh, we do. We just have enough. I don't know if I do that though. That's the thing. Oh, it's going to be... Man, it's going to be a tough choice. It's going to be a really tough choice if I trade to Tedesco. Obviously, I mean, they're just... It's just the fact they're coming up against the Cowboys, a really understrength Cowboys team with, like, for surprisingly so many players out through Origin, and the Roosters are, like, pretty well unaffected. Like, it's going to... It should be a bloodbath. Oh, man. Fuck, I don't know. But then, obviously, like I said, if Lane is on the bench... I mean, I don't have to trade Lane. If he, Even if he's on the bench, he will lose some cash, but he's still a number. It's like... It's probably more worth getting, like, a Tedesco in than a Preston. And I don't... I don't really want to do two trades. Because what I was thinking... What I was thinking, because obviously the other news is that fucking Dave Fafita wasn't selected for Origin, which is, I gotta be honest, it's baffling. Like, I, I saw a few people comment like, oh, how is, how is Jaden Sewer selected over Fafita? That is an incorrect take. Sewer 100% deserves to be there. I'm very happy Sewer got selected. He, I mean, I've always loved Sewer. He's got that aggression. He's got the skill. He's been... He's been really, really good for the Dragons for the last couple of years. Silver one hundred percent deserved to be there. I think he's built for Origin. Jeremiah Nenai, there is no fucking world Jeremiah Nenai deserves to get selected over David for Fita. I'm like that. I I like Billy. I like Billy. I think he's done a good job so far. But that selection is that is tilting as a Queensland fan. Nanai has been terrible. The Cowboys have been terrible. And yeah, Nanai, I think, has been rubbish pretty much this whole season. Like, yeah, he's he's caught the odd bomb and scored a try. Great. Dave Fafita offers so much more and he's actually been good. Like, I'm... Yeah, I'm a little salty. But that now leaves the potential because what I was thinking... I do one trade this week, depending who. Like I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not sold on who yet. Obviously, there's a couple of options. Like we could go like a Robson to Marshall King. I, I don't hate that. Uh, you could go Lane to a Preston or um, 
Connolly, Lemuelu, or or someone else that tickles the fancy, maybe, but is it really that necessary? Maybe not. Or you go Gagai to a either Tedesco or a gun centre winger, which I do like. So do one trade. And then next week, the Roosters don't play in the backup. So then trade Crichton, trade Crichton to Dave Fafita. I mean, that seems pretty perfect to me, right? Like Crichton, like I was like, I was undecided if I was going to hold Crichton over the origin period, but he has a pretty shocking like cover for origin players. He plays, he'll miss, obviously he'll miss 13, he'll miss 14, he plays 15, obviously that's good against Parramatta, but then he misses 16, and then he'll back up in 17, maybe. Like, that's the thing with the Roosters, they have so many back row options, like they've got Wong, they got Tupanua, they got Butcher, like, are they really going to back up Crichton if he's playing big minutes in origin? So he might not play 17, or it might be reduced minutes, and then... He misses 19 anyway, and then he, again, 20, the backup. We'll see. So I was I was tossing up, like, but in my mind, I was like, ah, he's my only, like, real, like, I didn't have Fafita. If I had Fafita and Crichton, I probably would have traded Crichton, kept Fafita. But because I had, like, only one, I was probably leaning towards holding Crichton and just riding the, the, the cash loss and just not bothering with the trade. But now... Now we have fucking Dave Fafita. Um, how expensive is David? Okay, so he's eight eighty four. He's just slightly more expensive than Crichton, which is fine. I do have cash, but if I go if I go Gagai to Tedesco, I don't know if I'm gonna quite have enough to go Crichton and then to Fafita next week. I'll have to I'll have to check on that. But uh, for feeder, I mean, the fact he's not playing Origin now. Obviously, I don't have to get him this week, which is nice. He's not. They got the buy anyway. But then he plays 14, 15, 16, misses 17, but then 18, 19, 20. I mean, fuck, that is a good run for for feeder. The obviously the, the obvious worry is that <laughs> fucking you get him in 14. Like, Queensland may lose the first game or someone gets injured. All of a sudden, Fafita is straight in the team in around 16. I mean, that, that would that would hurt. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That would that would definitely be a kick in the guts right there. But I think because he's not been selected, you just have to... I think you just have to take the punt and, uh, and bring him in. I don't think you can... I think, I think it's way too risky to be like, oh, he could get selected in the other games. I think you just have to do it. Uh, that is what I'm leaning towards. So it works out okay. It works out okay. Obviously, Dylan Edwards, we don't have to worry about because he's been selected. So, you know, I, the people the people that got on Edwards, they've got some big scores. They, they have definitely got some nice scores from Edwards. Um, if you could have got him a few weeks ago, you're still loving it, even though he's now going to miss a few games with Origin. But yeah, he's been, he's been on fire. So... Still a good trade in, but obviously, uh, you know, because I waited so long, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna take the risk of him making Origin now. So he has, I don't know, if you own Edwards, I'm not too sure. Like honestly, I think you'd hold Edwards, but I don't know. It's a tricky one because the P- Penrith are obviously flying again, but no Cleary. Do they back up Edwards? They've got other guys that can go to fullback, like Taruva could go to fullback. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if they if they back Edwards up in a couple of their games, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think I think that is pretty good as it stands. I'm I'm happy with everything. Um, I mean, originally I was like, oh, I'll trade out. I was actually sort of thinking about maybe trading out Val Holmes because I, <laughs> this is rather, this is the same shit that happened last year, right? So Val Holmes, <laughs> Val Holmes was like, he was good throughout the, throughout the season. Like 
everyone was like a little bit disappointed because he wasn't quite hitting the big scores his average what is he averaging i mean he's, he's averaging a little bit more this year because he's up he's had a couple of big ones but he was averaging around 70 i want to say last year everyone was getting a little bit fed up with him he lost some cash and then origin time it sort of made sense to trade him out but for me there was other issues with the team i was like oh, i'll just hold homes because he plays the backup game and then fucking last year i mean i'll show it again i've showed it before Last year, the backup games, he far and away scored his biggest scores by far. So if we look, uh, obviously 13 play Origin, the backup game against Melbourne, 150. <laughs> then he had a bye, didn't play 16. Backup game in 17, he got 91 and then 117. Then he didn't play 19 and then the backup game, he got 93. Like the man went to another level. Like the scores before that, like, there was only one score, 105, um, it, like, that was better than all the other games, pretty much. Like, he was... But part of me was like, is that really going to happen again? Is he really going to do the same thing? But now the fact with uh, Gagai having to go and potentially other guys needing to be traded out i'm like yeah again i think i just hold homes i, I don't think i'm gonna trade him <laughs> i'm just gonna hope that he he does the same thing and obviously he plays 14 as long as there's no injury we'll see i mean i think the cowboys need him to back up so i think he will uh like most of the cowboys players but we'll, we'll see what happens um but yeah anything else to really talk about i mean let's have a look I mean, let's have a look at... Well, we'll look at those positions I was I was talking about. So, dummy halves. If we trade Robson... So, Harry Grant... Fuck. Dude, Harry Grant owners must be, like, just ripping their hair out, man. He had, like... He's had, like, one good game. I feel like... Like... I don't know if you started with him. He's been, like, fine. I mean, he's gone okay. Like, 60, 60, 80. Couple of low ones. 95, 116. Like, he's had some good scores, but... Just not the consistency of, of Harry Grant of old. Uh, Reed Marnie. I mean, fuck, dude, dude. Who would you rather, Marshall King or Marnie? I mean, they're, they're averaging, averaging similar. I... I don't know who I'd be more... Like, I'm always worried about Marshall King. He's obviously had, like, an unaffected run this year. Like, he hasn't... I don't think he's had any sort of injuries or head knocks yet, but he's he's always been a bit like that in the in the past. Marnie has just been a lot better. <laughs> Marshall King obviously covers all three buys, but then doesn't play like any of the backups, I don't think. So he plays 13, not 14. He plays 16, 17, and he plays 19, 12. Okay, so he does have a pretty good run after 13. Um yeah, honestly, the way I'm looking here, I'm like, fuck, I, I think if I was going to get Marshall King, I think I would wait till 15, right? I would just hold off. I don't need the number for 13. And then Robson will play the backup in 14. Um, although I do have, I do have, um, what's his face? Brayley. So I, I, get, I don't even need a dummy half, really. I got Brayley for that, but... If I wanted to go Marshall King, I'd get him in 15, plays 15, 16, 17, misses 18, and then 19, 20. They're not, well, they're not the worst games. Obviously, 20 against Penrith is tough, and then it's a pretty good run for the rest of the season. Reed Marnie, he's nice for 13, 14, and then 16, 17. He only misses 19, which is a little bit tricky, tricky round. Um... They'll be missing a bunch of players, though. The Bulldogs, Kikiao's now injured. So, I don't know. It's a tough little choice between him and Marshall King. I mean, Abby Coruscant is fucking not picked. I mean, obviously not going to go him this week. He's on a bye, but I don't... I'm not going to go back to Abby. Like, he's he's obviously had a couple of good scores, but I just I just worry about Abby and his, uh, his longevity a little bit. And I think... I don't know. Anyone else, I think, is just a bit, 
bit of how you're going. So I think either of those two, Marnie or Marshall King, if I even want a dummy half, I don't even know if I bother, honestly. Like, I, I think I just wait till after Origin and go Harry Grant because I've got, like I said, I've got fucking... I've got Brayley for the purpose of this, right? He might not go great, but he plays... He plays 13-14, and then he plays... 1920 misses 16 honestly i think i did, I, fuck it, I think i just hold the dummy halves i don't think it's worth the trade i think you just go to robson and grant after origin honestly uh unless something crazy happens uh the back row so if you look at well we'll look at yeah we'll look at the back row i don't even know oh that's right fucking goddamn Preston, he he came off the bench and he fucking scored another try uh, with a line break. I was <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I actually couldn't believe it when he did that again, dude. Uh, but let's have a look. So obviously, a lot of these guys not going with Origin. You and Aiken. I mean, fucking Aiken's been good. He's a little bit, he's just a bit too expensive now. I think. Like, I just. Yeah, I, I don't think I want to go Aiken. I like him, but I think if I was going to go a Dolphins back row, I think I'd just go Connolly just for the, the cheaper price. Like, probably not as solid as Aiken, but still with the upside and, and much cheaper. Um, Who else have we got? Dylan Lucas. Fuck, I... I can't get any more Roosters. I, I cannot get more Roosters, but I don't have Victor Radley playing fucking in the back row he's like he's at a good price um no i can't i can't get any more roosters i just cannot there's too many as is bro <laughs> i got too many um i mean keon kalamatungi finally went bang he's on a buy though this week uh britain nicara 52 points like i'm just i'm not <laughs> i'm not too keen on nicara uh as a stand so yeah Connolly. He obviously made a bit more cash. He's 580. It's still a good price. Still a good price. 53 points. Like, it's it's good. He's obviously a super pod as well. And like I said, like, the Dolphins do, like, they got a great bike coverage. The only one they don't play is 14. They play 13, 16, 17, 19, 20. Like, it's really good. I think you do need some Dolphins. But again, like, what's his break even? He's got a break even of 31. So he's going to make a bit more cash. I would love to get him. Like, his, again, I don't need him for 13. You got to remember this if you're trading guys in. If you don't need him for 13, and especially if they're Roosters and Dolphins players, you got to be careful of 14. So if you can hold off and get him in like round 15 instead, then you don't have to worry about anything. They play 15, 16, 17, 19, 20. And then the back end, obviously. So, if you just hold off, like the money, he's going to make some more money, obviously, this round. But he would be a great pickup in 15 if I could swing it. Uh, anyone else of note? I, I forgot Murray is out injured, honestly. I forgot about him. Um, I mean, Scott Sorensen, he's back. But eh, Penrith don't have a great buy schedule anyway. I don't think so. Zab Papali'i, fucking 24 points. That's right, he got injured. I was wondering about that. Uh, so press, yeah, fucking 70 points, bro. Oh, I'm just like, now he's got a 31 break even. If he's off the bench again, like you can't, you can't go him. But if he's starting, I feel like I have to get him because he's so good. I don't know. It all it all depends on if he's starting or if he's coming off the bench because he's not playing. How many minutes did he play? He played. Not there. He played. He came on pretty early. No, not really. He played forty six minutes, but he got a try. Like you can't you can't pick up a guy playing fi less than fifty minutes. Um, honestly, Max Plath. I'm actually. St you know what? Would I rather? Hmm, that's a tough one. Would I rather Max Plath or would I rather Connolly Lemuelu? Uh, what is Plath? Okay, you can actually wait. Plath is actually perfect for this. I can definitely wait on Max Plath. You can definitely wait this week. He might he might hit his break even. He might make a little bit of cash. That's fine. Uh, he's every chance to like not 
hit it as well. His base, like, oh, fuck, he was an absolute monster in this game. Like, his base was out of control. He played 57 minutes, not quite where he was. So, it'll be another good watch this week to see if the minutes get back up to, like, 60+. plus. Um, but if you can, again, wait 13, doesn't play 14, pick him up in 15 would be ideal for Max Plath. He's not going to make a bunch. I actually, I probably prefer him over Connolly now. I don't mind him at all. And then... Yeah, no one really else of of massive note. I mean, what is... Where is... He wouldn't be this cheap. Where is fucking... Heal him, Luke. He only got 39. Didn't play the full 80. Where's fucking Bryce Cartwright? semi fine. So fucking Finu finally uh, got a few attacking stats. So I still, you know... I still think Finu... He's on a buy this week. So I think Finu... Uh, it's a bit annoying he made some cash, but it was going to happen eventually. In 14, trading out like a... Fuck, you could honestly trade out like Terrell May, maybe. <laughs> I I don't hate the idea of trading Terrell May in round 14. Obviously, Terrell plays 16, but... Fuck. The Tigers... Look at the Tigers after 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Like, Finu is just such a solid option... Like, obviously, the 82 is a bit of an outlier, but I still like him. I, I always liked him, but it just it just wasn't working for him. Uh, where is where is Cartwright? Is he more expensive? There he is. Okay, so he's 470. 54 points. I, I don't know if I can do it. I don't think I really want to get in another Eels back rower. They're just looking... Like, if Moses comes back, then yeah, Cartwright... And I mean, Moses will come back. So Cartwright does become a lot more tempting. And he's played 80 minutes now the last two weeks. I actually I don't hate him. I don't... What's his break even? 34. What is the Eels buy schedule like? So they play 13, 14. They miss 16. They play 19. It's 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 good. It's It's okay. You could do like a straight swap from Lane to Cartwright. I don't hate it, so I don't I don't mind. There is a couple of options there. We'll have a closer look, and then okay, we'll we'll hold it up there. I was gonna look at like wing and fullbacks and stuff, but we'll we'll wait for team lists to see who we're actually eyeing off. But as it stands, I think we're in a pretty good spot. Um, yeah, I think we're in a pretty good spot for this buy, especially, and then we just have to factor in starting to look for the future buys. Like I said, big, big thing. A lot of you guys, you're not going to need plays for round 13. So you look at a guy, yeah, like Lemuelu or Plath or, or, or like even a Marshall King. If you can hold off and just wait till after 14, which is a tricky round if you got a lot of Roosters plays, which I think most people do now, wait till after 14, pick him up in like 15. I think that will... That it'll just be it'll work a lot better for you so yeah we'll we'll have a closer look after team list to see if there's any sort of uh any sort of you know because you never know some of these guys could uh i need even fuck the one thing i didn't think about penrith obviously as aeo is going to be playing origin i don't think liam henry it's probably going to be Lindsay smith who will get the starting lock spot but yeah, it'll definitely be Lindsay Smith, but I'm, I'm a boy can dream that Liam Henry would get the starting spot. He won't, but he might play bigger minutes. That's that's uh, that's the other thing I was sort of hoping for in round 13. But we'll uh, we'll play it by ear. We'll look at team lists and then do a preview. So hopefully, you guys are enjoying the series. Make sure you like and comment. Hopefully, you guys are starting to move up the rankings. Like I'm I'm creeping, I'm crawling up the ranks. But hopefully, over this buy period, we can we can make some good moves and. Uh, and get up a little bit closer. So yeah, stay tuned for more. See you guys in the next one.